apologize for how long this video is, but I wanted to do a thorough job of explaining super elevated curves on the modern layout. How to do it, what it means, the, the advantages and disadvantages, and also I wanted to show you what it looks like on my layout because I have two hugely super elevated curves. Actually four. So on we go. I thought we'd talk about super elevation for those that are interested today. These are standard Hornby curves. I think this is a this is a the the fourth radius. I believe it's like twenty two and five eighths radius. Twenty two and five eighths would be about here. So yeah, that's probably about right. Um, in inches, I don't remember what it is in millimeters. Five seventy two, perhaps. My layout is based on these, but I have lots of space. Your, your layout probably isn't as big as mine. You probably can't make it that big. You probably can't have curves that big. I also spaced my, um, my track out uh, considerably more than um, would be uh, to scale. And why did I do that? Well, because the track's not to scale. The coaches are not exactly to scale, so I can't exactly use exactly real railway network, network rail geometry. Um, so I worked all that out in a, in a very early video. It's uh, right there. It's on your screen now, the video that you want to see to understand what I did here and why I did it. I put coaches on. I mailed the. Uh, I, I measured the outside throw on them and the inside overhangs, and I made sure that there was a half an inch clearance between the two in case I had cars that were rocking I didn't I wanted to make absolutely sure there could not be a collision let's get a coach what we're doing with super elevation is rotating around this inside if this was a curve around the inside rail so we're rotating it if this was the pivot, we would be pivoting around that rail. You can't do exactly things exactly the same way in modeling as you can in real life. For instance, on my super elevated curves, and I have four big ones over here, four, nine, uh, four 180 degree curves that are super elevated. My freight line is not super elevated because I knew I wouldn't be running at the same speeds that I would be running on my super elevated curves, my express lines. The object of super elevation, in case you didn't know, is that the wheels are actually cone shaped. They're not flat. You might think they're flat and it rides along on you know, bouncing from one flange to the other, but they don't. They they run in equilibrium on the cones to run down center. The center of the geometry of the cones of the wheels. This table may not be quite level. I have one clamp holding a large piece of plywood on a small, a very small little table. It's a very heavy table though, so it's pretty stable. Anyway, back to super elevation. As I said, my curves are comically 
super elevated. In other words, I elevated them, super elevated them way beyond what would be a scale elevation. And what I did was I used these plastic strips and in my case I used 0.60 I hope this is going to be in focus. If it's not, I'll fix it later. 0.60 by 0.100 So six, uh, 60 thousandths by a tenth of an inch. Yeah, I know we do things in inches and evergreen is a American product, although I don't know, I've never seen it in the UK, I see people with it, and it may not be in inches, it may be metric over there. I also laid all of my track on this stuff. HO track bed from Woodland Scenics. It's for HO. But this is, uh, this is actually HO track, in case you didn't know. I know you think it's double O, but it's really HO. And for good reason, too. One of them is that there are so many feet of HO track made that it makes the, the double O track cheap. That's what this stuff looks like. And that's what I put under all my track, and it's a... Uh, it does a couple of things for you. One, it gives you a perfect ballast shape. Although it can be, some people complain about how challenging it is to get it, get the ballast to stick to it. I personally have no problem at all. I, I learned to live with it quite easily. But as you can see from the picture, it forms perfect balance, ballast uh, shape underneath the track. It also provides acoustic isolation between the track and the wheels and the wood or rigid foam underlay underneath. It isolates it acoustically. I think the, uh, the camera is blocking the light. Maybe this is not the best place. Maybe I should move a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to though. So when I did it, I put my super elevation underneath this underlayment. But I did it along the track line. So I kept it under to support that side of the track. I tipped the track up, but I also tipped this up underneath it. It all got covered with ballast, so it looks perfectly fine. Well, you can't just throw some plastic under there and expect it to work. I would also say that uh, if you're using really tight radius, a second radius or first radius, I don't have a first radius curve to demonstrate. I wouldn't even try to super elevate it. Super elevate on fourth and perhaps third radius curves. I guess mine would be pretty close to... Uh, third radius because I use first radius or fourth radius as my guide and I set the next track inside on all the curves to fourth radius. At this at this distance at the distance I determined would be absolutely safe And I did not risk collision at all. When you go into the curve, you've got to, if you're just using one, you're going to have to get thinner material. You're going to have to get uh, 0.30. And you'll start with 0.30. And then you'll go to 0.60 later in the, later in the curve. In other words, you have to gradually go up into your maximum uh, super elevation. You can't just 
hop up because trains will all come off. I guarantee you everything will. And if you do it, if you decide to super elevate a curve or two, um, you can run into problems with certain stock not running. It'll fall inside the curve. Um, the only locomotive that I ever bought that I had trouble with on my curves was a class 40. I have a Bachman class 40 and for some reason it just does not run on the super elevated curves. However, here's a here's my Bachman 40. Looks like an extra long class 37. And here is my bullet. And if you look at it, the trucks are spaced out exactly the same. This just happens to be made a lot better because this one has the flexibility to handle my super elevated curves. There's the wheels are, uh, they have a movement in them and they can somehow flex enough to handle my super elevated curves without the slightest hesitation. This beast here, although it's a very interesting model, it won't go around them. But uh, all my uh, triple truck diesels go around it fine in my uh, double truck. HSTs without a problem. And along with uh, other uh, BB type trucks. So all that said, the easy way to do this, the easy way to do this, first of all, you've got to mark the outside of your curves. to draw that because it's a little bumpy and it would be better if um, if I had these uh, fastened down somehow or maybe some weights on them okay we could take that up in fact we'll go ahead and mark this one too If you're working with double O, you do know that your track is not to scale. It's not really as wide as it would be if it was all to scale. I think the track is what, 16.5 millimeters apart? That's not scale for double O. If you'll take four foot eight and a half inches, which is standard gauge, and divide that by 76, you'll find out what it should be. Okay, we have the outside of our curves measured. And I'm going to make the assumption that we're going to do it like I did and make it comically elevated. So that it's essentially is ridiculously elevated. I don't recommend doing this. But I don't have any thinner sticks. So this is the only way I can demonstrate how you would layer them. So that you can gradually get come into your super elevated area on your curve. So what we want to do is we want to get this to stay like that with an edge set on it. Now that's pretty hard to do if you're trying to glue it down it would want to go like that. So here's the secret that I found makes it really easy. Get 
get some masking tape. And use the masking tape to hold it down in the curve that you want. Oh, that's not right. blade right here handy I'd use that to cut the tape so that it wasn't so puffed up like that but this is a demonstration this is not perfect this is not done with the craftsman like uh, precision that you would do it if it was your own your own railway or railroad Now we find the end of that and butt that up there. Wrong one. That's the inside. Okay. Now if we held that down and fastened it, we would have a super elevated curve. But, to get into it, since we can't just go whomp up on it, you have to uh, gradually start with the lesser thickness, half the full thickness, and then overlap it. then you would come along and you would stack them. You can feel the other one underneath. So in the tangent to your curve, in other words, if you don't know what a tangent is, it's the the part, it's the straight track that approaches. So it's, it's a tangent to your circle. Uh, in the straight track, the tangent, what you want to do is about six inches out or so, you want to start to lift the track as gently as you can. You can't have a sudden jerk up because everything will come off the track, I guarantee it. So about six, so six to ten inches in front of the curve, you will start to raise that outside rail. And then you'll have, uh, you'll come into the curve a little ways and then you'll raise it again to your maximum and you carry your maximum through the curve and then you drop it back down to your middle and then before you get out of the curve drop it down to whatever your minimum is and uh, have that minimum go on out into the the um, tangent on the other end the straight track coming into it to glue it down, what I did is first of all I used a special glue. This foam tack, Woodland Scenics product. You spread this very, very thin. Once you get your 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 flat surface built to put it on, your plaster. 
once you get that smooth and sanded so it's it's a smooth banked surface all the way around you know you, you can't let it impinge on the next on the next track your next track has to be independently uh, banked or canted rotated about its axis whatever um, then you, you use this uh, foam tack glue to spread very thinly on the plaster very thin just spread it as thin as possible I had a plastic I can't find it right now but I had a piece of flexible plastic about that wide and about that long and I would take it and I would push down on it and scrape that until there was just a little bit of glue on it. You know, just just a little bit on the surface. And then I would all across the surface, so it was even. And then I'd put down the uh, roadbed, the foam, the foam roadbed. After that set up, then I'd do the same on top of the foam roadbed. Put a thin, very thin coating of the foam tack, and then I'd set the the track down in it and weight it so that it held the bottom down. And leave it for a couple of hours and it would set up and I'd be done. But you have to weight it down. I use paint cans because that's all I had. Maybe you have something more sophisticated you use for your weights. I know some people have a special, they look like bookmaking weights to me. I don't know what they are. You weight it down and this stuff grabs pretty quick and it doesn't take a lot of it. In fact, if you do it right, you'll be able to peel up the track and peel up the roadbed very easily and all everything could be reused if you put if you put a massive amount down then what happens is you could never retrieve it you could you have to cut the whole thing loose and start over again if you ever want to move it or change it so very thin but this stuff holds like like 90 it has a very strong tensile or shear strength rather has a very strong shear strength sideways and a weak tensile strength if you put it on thin if you put it on thick it's going to have a very strong tensile strength and you won't be able to get it off so that's that's it let's go look at my layout where I have some of these crazy elevated curves over here you can clearly see or I can clearly see that it's uh, it's tipped it's tipped in into the curve if you don't believe me I'll put a level on there and you can see the bubbles all the way at the top probably four millimeters three to four millimeters uh, lower on that side as it is on this side what you have to do is you have to uh, loosen the screw you have to loosen the screw in the bottom not so it falls off but so it uh, that it can negotiate now Fortunately, fortunately, HSTs will negotiate these, even mine, my comically super elevated curves. You can really see it there. You have to gradually start into it 
and then gradually taper out of it so that they, all the mechanisms have a chance to adjust. Otherwise, it'll just jump the track and that'll be it. Let's see some trains go through here now. <laughs> 